There may be some light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to gas prices. A boost in gasoline production and a dip in oil prices have led to the first national drop this year at the pump. That average has dropped about six cents since May. Analysts say the rest of the summer depends on whether OPEC follows through with those production increases they promised. Now, you might think all the previously bad news about gas prices over the last couple of months would have ridden sales of gas-guzzling SUVs into the ground. You might think that, but you'd be wrong. Published reports say sales of trucks and SUVs were actually up for the months of May. So, and also on the rise, the protests against the people who drive some of those big vehicles. Just look at this website dedicated to taking pictures of people flipping the bird at Hummers. We had to block out the fingers, but you get the picture. So, why is there so much hatred on the highways, and why are some willing to thumb their noses at it and keep on driving these monsters? Mike Tidwell's with the Chesapeake Climate Action Network. Ron DeFore is with the SUV Owners of America. And gentlemen, it's good to see you both here again. When you were here before in November, gas prices were, I don't know, 50, 80 cents lower than they are now. Ron, in light of where we are now, what's your reaction to all this hostility? Well, first of all, uh, we live in a free country, and uh, people can buy the vehicles uh, that they want, and that's a, that's a good thing. As long as they meet all the current fuel economy standards and emission standards, we should allow that to happen. And if the market, because of high gas prices, drive uh, people to different vehicles, again, it's, we live in a great country. It's a free market, and, and that's the way it ought to work. I guess you're thinking that hatred is justified. Hummers do not have to conform to the same economy levels as average cars. Hummers are three times more likely to kill the other passengers in a two-car collision. What's worse in this free society, we subsidize the cost of Hummers with uh, tax deductions of up to $100,000 to small business. You can write off $100,000 if you buy a Hummer from your federal income taxes. So we're subsidizing greater highway fatalities, more global warming pollution. Doesn't make sense. It's a harm to us, and we should ban <laughs> advertising like cigarettes. Well, you, you, you talked about the advertising ban before, and i got to be honest, I, that didn't make much sense to me then. I'm not sure it makes any sense like now. Cigarettes. But, but... The dependence on Middle East oil is a big problem. And, and when you're driving these big cars, you're not helping us out. In fact, they said if people stop driving SUVs, save 2.3 million barrels of oil a day. That's not true, because there's still 220 million vehicles left on the road. But they'd be driving, they'd be smaller and use less gas. But they, you can't control how much they drive the cars, and that's a, a big uh, dependence on how much oil we actually use. You know, I got a comment on what uh, Mike is saying. The Hummer as do all SUVs, meet strict emission standards. And in fact, if you really wanted to make a difference, you'd be going after all the pre-1994 passenger cars that pollute more than a new Hummer. That's so, how he said efficiency, not economy. They don't have to be as get as many miles to the gallon as the average car. So we're, again, having to subsidize these vehicles Everybody who drives a regular car subsidizes a Hummer. Everybody who pays taxes in this country subsidizes Hummers. What I said, I said emissions, make? not uh, efficiency, right, well, let's, and let's, I'm talking pollution. Well, let's talk a little bit about what would it take for, say, someone like you who's with this organization you're with to change your driving habits and drive something smaller and more efficient. How much would gas have to cost? Well, I've seen all the, all the polling, and it shows that it has to get up above $3.50 a gallon and, and be at least perceived to be sustained. Be and that's because you've got more than 25 million Americans that have chosen to buy SUVs be because of their utility, the things they offer that passenger cars often don't offer. Free country, buy what you want. Detroit says Americans want SUVs, they want them, don't ban our SUVs, don't tell us what to drive. Every year, Detroit spends tens of millions of dollars in Congress fighting any efforts to raise fuel economy standards even a little bit. Fair uh, point. Fair yeah. point. Well, it's ridiculous. He, he's he's going after the poster child, which is the Hummer, which is such small production. Th there's and, more and, and portions. And in fact, and he's right. Sales of Hummers, in fact, that's the one that has actually well, gone down. But but let's talk about overall. Raising fuel economy would be a good thing overall, but it would especially be tough on the bigger cars, like the SUVs. If you're talking and, and, about and Detroit fights it tooth and nail. And for good reason. If you're, if you're talking about the fuel economy standards, the government studies show that those standards cause the downsizing of the American car, which leads to an additional 2,000 fatalities and 20,000 serious injuries every year above what we would normally see. And so we traded blood well, he for says, oil. Well, he says we don't think that's a good idea. Americans know that those Brinks trucks out there are dangerous. Three times, more than three times more likely to kill the other passenger. Come on. He's saying smaller cars kill Americans. We know what's killing Americans. Let's, we know what's driving global warming. Let's look warming, at the data. According, this is according from, to the Bush this administration. This is from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, the fatal data is for last year. If it was a big crisis 
the uh, big cars, big SUVs hitting little cars, this number would have gone up. It actually went down. So the people dying in passenger cars being hit by SUVs, the number went down. So it's not a crisis. All right, gentlemen, we're going to have to end it there. more likely to kill the other passenger in a well, bomber than true. a regular car, and we subsidize it with tax deductions. It's ridiculous. Stay, stay, stay safe on the way home, guys. All right, thanks. All right, bye-bye. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thanks,